Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to be with you here in God's house this morning. We'd like to welcome our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray you would come and be with us again very soon. I would invite the congregation to be seated at this time and our baptismal party to come forward. course and we finished the course on baptism last week and John is going to be baptized here among us this morning. What a wonderful day. The order of baptism can be found in the front of your hymnal this morning on page 268. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the beloved Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever, unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how are you named? John Robert Kerber, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one who Christ has redeemed. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, According to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you persevered, and you preserved, believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through baptism in the Jordan, your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold John according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit. And through the saving flood, all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and in which he himself has committed sins would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. John, I ask you, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? John, do you desire to be baptized?
John Robert Kerber, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of his land and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir along with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we answer, Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted John a new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And peace be with you. Amen. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Our worship service today is divine service setting when it begins in the front of your hymnal on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together the words of the intro, which you can find printed on this insert in your bulletin.
Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the, unsur- to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his peoples. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, be to God. We rise to honor our God in the hearing of his gospel. sun and moon and stars and on earth the stress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leave, and you see for yourselves and all that summer is already near, so also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and a day come upon you with sudden, suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The next for our message this morning comes from our epistle lesson. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. These are the words of God that we will meditate upon this morning, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. How about today we blow up some more Advent expectations like Pastor did with us last week? We're going to do it this way today. Jesus came not to be the servant we want, but to be the servant that we need. The servant we want is one we can manipulate, control, cajole, push around, and command. That's the Jesus that many people want. Kind of a, a milk toast kind of pushover who will do what we want when we want it done. <laughs> Too many people want Jesus to be their servant by dispensing to them whatever goodies they might name and claim. And I thought about that. The way that most you and I would have never dared to treat our parents when we were children is the way that the, they, and yes, maybe sometimes we, treat Almighty God. But none of that is true. And really, none of that is the servant that we need. We don't need a vending machine. We need a Savior. The servant Savior that God himself describes in his holy word where he says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the servant that we need. The servant that Jesus Christ came and still comes to be. As Pastor told us last week, Advent means to come to. Jesus came to us to be our Savior, and he still comes, even when we aren't looking, even when we're looking in the wrong places, when we are looking for the wrong kind of Savior. But most importantly, I think, Jesus came to be the needed servant for all people. In our text verse today, St. Paul reminds us that Jesus came for both the Jew and the Gentile, and he blew up the expectations of both of these groups. See, Jews, they were looking for a particular kind of Savior, a Savior who would give them their worldly desires of power and prosperity, put a king back on the throne of Israel and kick out these Romans. That's the kind of Savior we want. But Scripture tells us that Jesus Christ came to be a servant to the Jews in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. But what are those promises that God had always given to his people since the very beginning? Well, Jesus was going to come to fulfill the promise to be the one who would crush Satan's head. Jesus would be the one who would be a blessing to all nations as a descendant of Abraham. Jesus would be the one who would hold in his hand the scepter of Judah. Jesus would be the one who would sit on the throne of his father David forever. He is the one who would be the one shepherd of all of God's people. And he would be the one born of a virgin and be called Emmanuel. He who would be the ruler of Israel, whose coming forth was from old, from ancient of days. That was the Jesus that they needed. That is the Jesus who came 
in order to prove the truth of all that God had said. You see, Jesus came to God's people and he fulfilled all, all of God's promises. All of the prophecies of the Messiah that had been given for thousands of years. Jesus himself said of the Messianic prophecy that he himself read that day in the synagogue, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And again, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they, the scriptures, that bear witness about me, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. You see, that's the problem. <clears throat> that is the problem with all sinful and rebellious mankind. Not just them out there, but you and me. That we want Jesus to be one kind of Messiah. Namely, a servant at our beck and call to give us what we desire. But Jesus came to be not the servant we want, but the servant that we need. He came to serve by saving. He came to serve by doing what we needed to have done and not what we wanted to have done. He came to be born lowly and humble in a manger. He came to live obediently to his Father in our place. He came to fulfill all righteousness for us. He came to be the king of his kingdom, a kingdom that is not of this world because this world is going away. He came to die in your place, in my place. He came to take his life up again for our justification, and he has now gone to prepare a place for you and for me and all who believe in him to live with him forever. That is the servant savior that we need. Yeah, the Jews wanted an earthly servant who would give them earthly freedom and earthly power Worst of all, who would go along with the religion that they had made up rather than the religion that had been given them by Almighty God. And many Christians today, maybe we ourselves, we want that same kind of servant. We want that same kind of religion. God, give us our earthly desires. That's number one. And when I name it, when I claim it, God, you better pony up. Like Pastor said last week, they and we tell God that we will decide. We will come to him when it's convenient to us. We will do what we call worship. And we will give to him what we want to give to him. All of that instead of the truth. The truth of God. The truth that God calls us by the gospel. We don't decide. He calls us by the gospel. He comes to us here in the divine service by serving us with forgiveness and life and salvation by his chosen means of word and sacrament. Jesus comes here in his church in humble yet powerful means and ways to be the servant that we need because the servant that we want does nothing for us but fool us. Fool us into being comfortable as we are walking down the broad path of destruction not realizing that we're wrong until it's too late. Scripture tells us, as you heard in our text today, that Jesus serves and continues to serve for the sake of God's truth. Advent, this season that we are in, 
prepares us to remember and to celebrate Jesus coming into this world to be our saving servant. He had been promised to the patriarchs, and then he was promised to all of the children of Israel. And according to God's eternal promise, he was born out of them, according to the flesh. And he lived in their midst, and he performed all of his works of salvation. In Jesus, the promise of God was fulfilled, and he performed the work of salvation, and the veracity of God was verified and vindicated. The true Israelites then heard and they saw and they believed Jesus and they became. And the Jews can still become partakers of Christ's salvation and praise God for his faithfulness in Jesus and for keeping all of his promises given to them by the Father. But what about us? What about we Gentiles? Well, Paul reminds us also in our text today that even though we are not genetically children of Abraham, we are spiritually children of Abraham, and we have always been since the moment we came to faith. We too can look at the fullness of God in fulfilling all of his promises and doing his saving work in Jesus and then give glory to God for his mercy toward us. And then you heard in the scriptures today, Paul quoting Old Testament scripture after scripture after scripture, confirming the New Testament promise that there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is not male and female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus, and you are Christ's. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise, not genetics. Jew or Gentile, you see, it does not matter. We are all saved in the exact same way. Because in God's mercy, Jesus came, and he comes, and he is coming again. God, out of his free grace, has given us the same gift and the same benefits that he gave to the children of Israel to whom the promise had been entrusted. Jesus came just as much as a servant to us Gentiles by working the exact same works of salvation, by sending out his messengers to all of the nations, by gathering his church out of all the peoples of the world, including you and me, right here, right now, today, and he did all of that by the preaching of the gospel. By the faithfulness of God to the Jews, by the mercy of God to the Gentiles, we both owe the possession of our salvation to Jesus Christ, the servant we need. Remember that Jesus comes to serve and he comes to serve us by blowing up all of our sinful expectations of what we want and replacing them with the sacred realities of what we need. Like Naaman, we sinfully want better rivers and waving hands. But like John today, Jesus gives us simple water and word and he served salvation to one that he won for all. We sinfully want emotion and show and spectacle. But Jesus serves us here at Trinity Congregation by giving you two pretty ordinary guys. With ordinary but extraordinary words because they are the words of Jesus, and they are the words of eternal life. And through those two ordinary guys, God gives us what we need, what we need, which fills us, which saves us, instead of giving us what we want, which will always leave you, always leave you empty in the end. So may Jesus blow up our expectations of Advent, too. 
May God turn the rest of this Advent season around for us in our minds and our lives. You see, Advent is not pre-Christmas. Advent has been and always will be a season of penitential reflection on our sin and a joyful remembrance of Jesus' first coming to be the Savior that we need. It reminds us also of his continual coming to us in word and sacrament, giving to us the gifts that we need of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy, and of life. And it is also a season of true and joyful expectation of his final coming, when his service to our salvation will be completed. And when we then will joyfully serve our Lord and our God in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, and in glory in the new creation. And as we await that great day, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And to that we can respond in joy. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God read and expounded upon, we now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. This time we'll gather our offerings to the Lord, and I ask that you register your attendance in God's house this morning by signing your name on the pad at the end of your pew. Now so with prayer assisted in your bulletin for today, we've had these special prayer requests to pray for Pastor Beckwith, who has been sick most of this week. We also pray for the family of our brother Carly upon his passing. Let us rise now as we lift our prayers and praises to God our Father. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by speaking you created out of nothing the entire universe and the earth on which we dwell. All that you created was good, yet the first parents sinned and brought the world into corruption and decay. We give you thanks that Christ came into the world to save us from our sin. As we await his final coming, Grant us faithful hearts and eagerly await his great appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of mercy, you cause your majestic voice to be heard. Your law is a hammer to our hearts, exposing our every misdeed. You know that we have failed to keep your commandments in every way. We do not deserve your mercies or any good thing. Yet you sent your Son, our good shepherd, to take away the sin of the world. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine on us that we may be saved, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, the world is filled with sin and trouble. 
The devil, the world, and our own sinful nature try to deceive us and mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Guide us by your Spirit that we may escape these things and remain firm in the faith. Keep watch over us and strengthen us that our hearts may not be weighed down with the cares of this life. Grant that we may receive the gold of our faith, the eternal salvation of our bodies and souls. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal God, your word has been sent forth into the world to the joy and edification of your holy people. Bless and empower those whom you have called to proclaim and spread your word, including John Jenkins, Carl Beckwith, Fred Reinhardt, and the Federitz family. Grant that your word may encourage, comfort, and strengthen all who hear it. Grant faith to those who do not know you, both here and abroad, that all people may sing to your name and extol your goodness. By the power of your Holy Spirit, fill all who hear your word with all joy and peace and believing. Lord, in your mercy, creator of all, many in our midst have been afflicted with pain, sickness, trial, mourning, and difficulties. Be merciful to those who are close to us, especially Pam, Kay, Willard, Linda, Cindy, Terry, Joanne, Chris, Alan, Dorothy, Carl, and the family of Carly, and all of those that we now lift up before you in our hearts. That they may be granted health or strength to endure their afflictions. Help us all to see that when Christ returns in glory, he will make all things new. Even our bodies will be incorruptible and immortal. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful Father, you have taught us to straighten up and raise our heads when we see the coming of the Son of Man. Even now your Son comes to us under the bread and the wine in the sacrament. Grant that all who commune today may receive the very body and true blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all their sins. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament found beginning on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Has no end. 
graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. 